Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna try to go to 1525 today. I am feeling well enough that I think I can play a few games of chess here. Now I am gonna be taking a break after every game, stretching my legs, getting up and walking around. Um, I highly recommend that you guys should do too. Before we start, I just wanna say, um, life is short. And if you have something that you've been meaning to do, that you've been putting off, maybe go do it like today, like right, well, not right now, finish the stream first, but after the stream, go do it. Like seriously, how many times have you said, I'll do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow turns into next week, which turns into next year, which turns into never. So make the most of the time that you have. Today's a gift and go, go do what you need to do. I don't know what that is for you, but something probably came to your mind when I said that. And yeah, go make it happen. All right. One other thing before we get started, I want to show you guys. Um, I found this. Let me actually go to full screen for this. I found this super cool little timer. And essentially, it has numbers on the top. There's different numbers. That's 30. There's 25, 10, 5, whatever. But you turn it on. And as soon as you place it on your table with a certain number facing up, it immediately starts counting down if you can see that. So I put it on 30, it just starts counting down. If I turn it to 10, uh, it just switched to 10 minutes. You can sort of see that there. So it's super handy for like reminding yourself to get up, take a break, don't work too long. So if you have a desk job, you might want to check out something like this. It just looks cooler than like most timers and it's really easy to use. You just literally just turn it over and you're good to go. Um, but yeah, I just bought that. It's on Amazon. There's a, there's a link I put it in the description just in case. But I highly recommend that for people who have sedentary jobs. Trust me when I say, you don't want a blood clot. So, all right. Now that I got all that stuff out of the way, let's play a game of chess. How does that sound? Wow, thank you guys. Um, appreciate all the, the kind words. All right, here we go. I'm gonna play a game. I'll keep reading comments if I can. All right, let's play e4 because I like to play e4. And let's play bishop c4. This is the uh, bishop's opening. And the point is not to go for a checkmate. I mean, we can, but that's not the idea. It's pretty easy, like, it's pretty easy for black to stop that. They can play queen f6 or queen e7 and just kind of defend everything. h6 is a weird move. Um... Usually when I see this, I just want to start like attacking the center right away. Let's go ahead and play knight f3 and d4. Uh, because black's kind of wasting time, right? Like instead of developing their pieces, now they are, but uh, this is not a developing move. So let's play d4, just strike at the center. And here we could take, we could even just leave it for now and castle just to go for this super fast development. Um, I think I'll just go ahead and take it. King Castle probably next move. And I'm going to start looking for tactics here. So like, let's just say black plays bishop c5. I'm going to think about taking here followed by a queen check and, and winning the bishop, something like that. And they didn't do it, so we'll just take back. But whenever you play this bishop c4 move early on in these positions, you always want to be, you know, thinking about this kind of stuff. Um, Right now, I don't really have a follow-up, so I'm not going to do it at this moment. Okay, black's bishop is stuck. I like the the pressure here it looks like black's probably just going to try to develop something like this which is fine i think i'm going to play knight c3 um just getting all my pieces out quickly i might castle this way i might also castle queen side depending on what black's going to do okay we could play this move takes do we have a tactic here we can sack that and then if the king takes we take the queen so this is an interesting move here um, <clears throat> I'm trying to see if like black has any other responses because the the problem for black is it's annoying. Like, where do you move your knight to? Guess they could go over to h5. That just doesn't look like a very good move. So here's the idea again, just to recap, we're going to take here. The king takes and we take the queen. If the king just moves up, well then I guess we could just trade a big trade, but I still kind of like my position. So yeah. Definitely think I'm going to play this move. Just trying to see if I'm missing anything. It's kind of a committal move, but it looks, I mean, it looks pretty good to me. So let's go ahead. We'll play e5. 
This is a pretty common tactic whenever you can, um, whenever the queens are, let's just say, attacking each other along the D file and you have your bishop lined up attacking F7, you want to look for the idea of taking because it lures the king away. I think it's called def deflection tactic. Lures the king away from the queen. So deflects the king away from the defense of the queen. Oh, queen e7. So that, there's a move that I probably should have considered that I didn't. Looks like a pretty good move actually from black because they, they pin me and they're just threatening to take. So probably a bit of a mistake on my part. I'm thinking if I can play bishop f4 now to have the ability to recapture. If I just castle, then black's going to simply take here. I lose the pawn, and I don't really have a great follow-up. I think bishop f4 makes the most sense. It keeps developing quickly, defends the pawn. Yeah, let's do that. And I did miss this move, though, so that's something I probably should have considered. But I think we're still... I think we're still in a pretty good position. We have three pieces out, right? And black only has the one. So there's got to be some, some good moves here. Thanks, Rob. I'm I'm hanging in there. Good to see you. Oh wow, interesting move. So immediately when you see a move like this, uh, what should jump out you what should jump out at you is all these squares. All of a sudden, the light squares. So this diagonal, this diagonal, just feels like a weird move. Now I can't like immediately you know do something like this and threaten checkmate because it's obviously defended. Bishop b5, I could play. d6 is not an option. There's bishop d7. Hmm. Very, very weird move. I don't think that's a good move. So I think... Rook would just move over. Not bad for me, but it's probably not the best. I'm probably just going to leave it right now. I really want to get out of this pin. Because as soon as I get out of the pin here, this is a threat. And black probably has to take, which then gets my bishop into the game. So I'm thinking we castle this way, because that gets an extra rook involved. That's That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and castle. And I'm just going to keep these weaknesses kind of in the back of my mind for, like, follow-up moves like this. You know, just something that takes advantage of the fact that... Because, like, normally if I were to go here, black could very easily play c6, because the pawn would be defending. But now they can't. So you just want to think about these things. <coughs> hmm. Yeah, for everybody asking, I'm I'm doing okay. Um, still still ad adjusting the diet to deal with the gout, and then uh, also the blood clot. I'm kind of working through that. So. Yeah, it's kind of a slow process, but um, I'm feeling much better than I was like three or four days ago. So uh, that's, yeah, that's really good. <laughs> so here we go. If I go check, there's this. We can take it. Don't quite have enough. I'm probably just going to take this. But I'm happy because look at, the, look at the king and the queen. Look at this open E file. And there's just so many things now all of a sudden that, you know, black has to be careful of. So this is probably the critical moment in the game where we need to find the winning combination. So probably going to spend some time here and try to find it. You guys can do the same if you want while I'm kind of looking. And already I can see it looks like it's going to be something with bishop b5 check. Question is, probably we need to take the knight first, because the knight is going to be the, the only real defender there. So I think we take that. Then after black recaptures, then we can go check. And now black can no longer play bishop d7. They really have no moves. King e7 
looks like it has to be bad and lead to something. So I think that's what we do. Now, if we go check first, then it gives black the option to go knight to d7. Still a good position for me, but I think just taking first is the way to go. So if they take with the pawn, we go check, they go here. We pin the queen and that's GG. If they take with the queen, like I mentioned, we go check. We would have to go king e7. What do we have a checkmate or something there? We have a fork, but the bishop would take. We can go here, check. Oh yeah, that looks good. That looks super good. All right, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna take the knight first to get rid of the defense of this square. And then I think I see a win following with bishop b5. So let's go with that. Pretty forcing move. There's not a ton that black can do, I don't think, here. I think they have to deal with this, right? So. All right. Okay, so they take with the queen. So now we go over here, I think. And you can see again how that b6 move comes into the picture, right? Before, they would have c6. But now they don't. They can't go here to checkmate. They have to move up. And then I believe we have a nice little tactic with knight to d5. So let's go here. Just checking. Are there any like easier ways to do it? No, I don't think so. I think this is the way to do it. So I'm expecting king here. And then we're going to go knight to d5. Forks these guys, forces the capture. Then we're going to bring the rook over. And even though black can go back, <coughs> can go back <coughs> and block, it's pinned. So we go checkmate. A nice little knight sacrifice to finish off the game, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so let's verify real one more time since we have some time. Here's the move. Forces black to take, otherwise they lose a queen, which is good enough for me. Once they take, we go check. King doesn't have any good moves. If you try to do that, you're just going to be in trouble as well. So you probably are going to block with the bishop. And then that's checkmate. All right, so there we go. We verified it. I can play it. Uh, queen b4, black would have c5. So that's that's a good idea, but so c5 actually looks like it saves saves black in that situation. Okay, so they do take, and let's verify one more time. Make sure because sometimes, like as the position becomes clearer, you might notice something that you missed. So when I have extra time, I like to verify, but. Yeah, this one's pretty straightforward, I believe. So here we go. Notice how we've got all the pieces lined up and just a matter of finding the winning continuation. This one's a little tricky if you're not used to seeing this tactic, but you have to understand that the... Oh. Chess.com updated their, their uh, windscreen? I did not know that. Okay, that's new. Looks pretty good, I guess. I like I like the dark theme, so okay. Game review, and then it's time for a break. Let me update the wins over here. I think I've like lost track of some of these, but it's close enough. You like the old one better? Oh, 99.5. That was a pretty good game. That was a pretty good game. Cool. So our opponent, yeah, you can see, you know, you don't really have time for this kind of a move in these aggressive uh, king pawn openings where your pieces are just coming out quickly. It's almost always going to be a mistake making too many pawn moves like that. You couldn't tell right away, but it, it showed up later. And then here, I missed this move. Turns out 
that it wasn't actually good for black. So I kind of got a little lucky there. Sometimes you miss a move and it's like, oh, you just lost the game. In this case, it, it just wasn't good. And then, yeah, B6, we can see the weaknesses, which which ultimately cost black the game later, right? And then we had a nice little tactic here. And there you go. Cool. Okay. Um, I am going to get up, walk across the house for like two minutes, and then I'll be back and we'll keep going. So I recommend you guys maybe do the same if you want. I'll be right back. What's up guys, I'm back. Takes a while to walk across the house. Right now, got some blueberries, some water. Some blood circulating through my legs. I think we're ready for another game. All right.
All right, let's play something different just to just to mix it up. Play the Scandinavian. Ah, he's gonna push. Okay. So we can go into like an advanced French, but one of the drawbacks of the French is your bishop gets stuck. But in this case, we can bring it out. Not like that, um, but we can bring it out. So that's the good news. I'm gonna start with C5, but I'm probably gonna plan on putting my bishop on one of these two squares, which um, will be nice. I might actually do it right now, because if I don't, maybe white plays. Eh, they wouldn't really be able to play bishop e3 immediately if I play knight c6. So we'll, we'll play knight c6. Put the pressure on the pawns, and I'm keeping this open for my bishop. So the first thing I'm going to ask myself is, is that a mistake because of this fork? I don't think it is because knight to c3 will defend. Then I could take... Black, uh, white's going to take. I have to take. And I guess they take here. I could play c5, but then they would grab the pawn. So maybe it's not a mistake, but it almost looked like it was. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see if there's something I missed, but I guess it's not a mistake. Okay. So now I'm thinking I want to develop the bishop. <coughs> Do I want to maybe play queen b6 instead? Or I could still go for that line. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, let's get the bishop out. I'm not actually sure what the best move is, but I think it's a safe uh, option to develop a piece. It's a good square. So and now I can play e6, unleash this guy. I don't have to worry about my bishop being stuck. So I think this is a good choice. Okay, um, just real quickly, does that change anything with the tactic from before? I don't really think so. Um, yep, so I think I'll just play e6. I'll just keep it simple. Get my pieces on good squares. Now this is supported. This is supported. Everything's kind of well defended. The one thing I'm thinking about is how badly do I want to save this bishop? It was like knight to h4, I might have to give it up. But I could play a move like h6, and then I would be able to preserve this bishop. Which, if you compare this position to like the last one we looked at, the position is much more blocked up. Um, Sorry, not the last, but the last game where my opponent played h6, right? They didn't really have time for that move. But in this case... Kind of a slower slower game at this point. So I think I probably do have time for that. But I'm considering h6. Takes away some other moves from white. Also, like I said, save my bishop. Queen b6 also looks like a pretty nice move. Just keeping up the, the pressure on some of these things. So, yeah, maybe, maybe queen b6 is good. I don't know. I was also thinking about that. But I, I guess queen b6 is good. My opponent said the clock is a piece. <laughs> They're not wrong. They're not wrong. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we could take. I don't know what's happening here. I can't really do anything because of the pin. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. I could play a6 to force something to happen. I could just defend this. But even castle, just to get out of the pin that way, I can bring the rook over here. So many moves are coming to mind. I'm not really a, a French player or a Karo Khan player, or you know, so these positions are not really my normal. So I'm not like entirely sure what the best thing to do is. <clears throat> 
yeah, really not sure what to do. All right, I'm going to bring my knight here. But see, I don't want to allow this because I want to take with the, the bishop. Hmm. There is knight h6, which looks super weird, but giving up the double isolated pawns and a weakness here would at least open up a way to attack the king, which I kind of like. But I could play that as well. Could also just take and then play bishop c5, and then just go about my... Ah, but then the bishop is, is going to get captured, which I don't want to allow. Okay. I don't know. I have to make a decision, so I'm going to just go with this one. It is a weird-looking move, but like I said, I think the, the rook being able to attack the king is going to be worth it if white decides to trade. There is this weak square on f6, but it's not easy for not easy for white to take advantage of this, right? Like a knight there would be very annoying, but how's the knight going to get there? Mm, you'd have to get to like one of these two squares, I guess, but then I can always cover it with the bishop, so I think we're okay. Now I'm thinking let's let's attack the king here. So rook to g8, I believe is going to make a lot of sense. I'm um, not really worried about this move. They can push that if they want. I'll just go back. Okay, let's go ahead and start lining up here on the king. This is why I did this, right? This is what I wanted to do. So kind of happy about that. Okay, a5. I think, like I said, we're just going to go back. Not a huge deal. All right, so they're going to take here. I think I will take that with my bishop. Now we have some pressure on this pawn as well. Not shoot. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my king. Knight h4. Okay, so the first move that's coming to mind is what if I go here? Maybe white wants to bring the queen out. I'll also take this with the queen, which does defend that, and brings my queen closer to the action. That looks good. There's rookie one. It's getting wild. All right, it's getting wild, but my instinct is telling me this is a good move. So I'm going to trust it in this case and take the pawn. And I'm, I'm starting to think about attacking. I think that's, you know, all my pieces are starting to look like they're lined up for that. Not all of them, but a lot of them. I'm starting to look for, for tactics, for things that I can attack in different ways. Like even this move. Lures the king out. Queen can come in. Very dangerous for white. We can just go here right away. It does allow knight f3. Hmm. Yeah, this is super interesting. I mean, I don't see how I don't see how a white is dealing with this. After this, my queen's gonna come in. I'm attacking the knight with check. <coughs> Here we go. Even if I lose this, there's got to be... Because white can take this, but there's got to be some checkmate here, I think, right? I don't see it immediately, but I'm, I'm just going with my instinct. Like, there's got to be a checkmate here. I didn't think about that move. It's a good move, I guess. We do have queen g3 still to keep up the pressure. Hmm, that's a pretty solid move, though. Hmm. And also go here. I don't actually know what to do here. All right, let's go queen g3, I guess. So we're just keeping a lot of threats. 
with the battery. Probably I'm going to castle because I really want to start thinking about using my knight and maybe even my other rook. So castling, I think, gives me the option to do that. Also go bishop h3. The, oops, sorry. The rook can't take because the queen would take. What would white play? Queen f3 I don't think is a good move. Oh, what should I do? Castle or bishop h3? All right, let's let's go for this one. I'm not sure if it actually works, but I'm running out of time, so I gotta just kind of make a decision here. Oh, he takes it. Okay. Well, now I'm back to having my threats again. We've got this move. <coughs> Still castling. Was an idea. Queen H five is probably what he's going to play. Can go here. Threatening the knight. <coughs> Queen d4. Hmm. Still go here. We might lose that. I want to get this out of in. We can check. I can go here. And I want to follow up with this move. First, we'll just take it. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That's a good move, I think. Yeah, I don't have to go back with the queen. Not ideal.
if we if we can get out of the checks, we can take that knight and we'll be in okay shape, I think. Can't get away from him right now. There we did it. Now I don't know what's happening. Nope. Never mind. I know what's happening. <clears throat> I guess we're going to win. I don't know. I don't know. What am I eating? Blueberries. Apparently they help you play in time pressure. So... A little lucky there at the end. Obviously, we made a few mistakes. Let's check the game review. Yeah. Kind of felt like it was. This is actually... I'm glad this happened because when you play openings that you're not familiar with, a lot of times this is what happens because you don't like necessarily know all of the ideas behind what you're supposed to be doing. And that's kind of what we saw. I was a little bit, you know, confused, right, about what I should play. So let's let's take a look here. Wow, even Bishop F5 it doesn't like. It wanted me to just take and play E6. Interesting. Yeah, see, I was never going to do that. I was never going to do that. I really felt like right around here, we should have had something. That was not it. <clears throat> yeah, Queen F4, which I was thinking about, was the better way to do it. I guess because I missed Rook H1. So this way, you're attacking both things. White has to go back. And then you just castle. You just, just slow down a little bit. Yeah, that's what happened. I just jumped the gun a little bit with the attack there. And Rook H1 was a great defensive move. Yeah, I mean, it was a tough game to play in time pressure, but that was a bad idea. I was thinking, get out of the pin, but I didn't want to castle because I was thinking if I castle, then like my king is just going to be exposed over here. But really, white didn't have time to do that, I guess. I shouldn't have worried so much. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And then, our opponent really had us here. Yeah, that was a great move. Well, actually it wasn't as good as just going here. 
Although I didn't see the follow up after this. Oh, Rook F1. Ooh. Ooh. There's checkmate. Ooh. Nasty. Nasty. That's a lot to see, though, in a blitz or in a fast game. And then our opponent had us here. I knew that I needed to give up the queen because if I move here, I'm just losing everything, right? Lose my queen. Actually, this would happen first. And then it's all over. I knew I needed to give up the queen. Even, of course, you know, a queen and a knight is better than two rooks. <coughs> but what our opponent let us do here was get back in the game with this move right here. This, Yeah, this was huge. Because I take it, and I get the double up pin on the knight. And now white just needs to go for the perpetual check, essentially. And eventually they decided to take the pawn over here, which allowed me to get out of it. Yeah, they needed to play queen h3. Yep. And I was going to just trade it, go into this endgame. And I don't know, I think I might have still had a chance to win, because my king can just make a beeline. Engine says it's just a draw, though. Just a draw. And then we had this nice tactic here where we could force the king off of the back into the, the line of the rook, and it was relatively straightforward from there. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm feeling better. Um, little by little. All right, guys, I'm going to take another break. I go for another walk. I'm going to refill my water. And I will be right back. Hey folks. Oh, I missed a super chat from Nils. Hey, thank you. Bon appetit. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. I am going to play a new game. I'm just doing some some um whatever this is called with my feet. Try to get the blood moving through the calf little bit you want to hear a chess joke yeah go ahead 
Go ahead, R2-D2. What you got? As long as it's clean. As long as it's a clean one. I do. Hmm. <coughs> The real chess joke is my Rook endgames. Um, all right, let's play a new game. How's my health? Um, pretty good, I guess. Somebody offered me a draw. What? Offered me a draw before I even made a move. What is happening? Another draw. All right, then. Great game. I'm glad we had that experience. Okay. Maybe I should stick with my normal stuff and for this game. Okay, we have a scotch. We'll go ahead and take it. And standard move here is bishop c5. We're just developing and putting pressure on the knight. And I think we can play queen f6. I think... Hmm. Probably can also play knight here. I'm thinking about playing that just to mix it up a little bit. Play here in like d5. That seems like a good plan. Let's try that one. So I'm just developing, getting ready to castle, and thinking about how I'm going to strike at the center. So in this case, probably d5. Um, sometimes you could even do f5 after we castle. Just have to keep an eye on this diagonal. That's the risk with that one. But d5 probably makes more sense because it also lets out the bishop. Okay. Uh, am I concerned? Not entirely. I'm going to go ahead and castle. I think that's a good move. Gets the king out of the center right away. <coughs> and now I'm thinking d5. I'm also thinking about relocating the knight over here. The nice thing about this move, which I like, and I'm a little bit familiar with this idea from, from the Cozio defense, is that it kind of takes away the some of the squares for this bishop. He can't pin me because my queen is there. Can't go to f4. I think I will do that. Yeah, let's let's do that. Sometimes you can even use this knight to attack on the king side. We'll see if we get an opportunity to do that. Okay, rookie one makes sense. Um, a six will force the bishop to make a decision, which I kind of like. If I move the pawn now, I'm going to just lose this. I would ideally, I would like to recapture with this pawn and just let my bishop out like that. I can also bring the queen out over to the king side because then it opens up tactical ideas and, and ways to attack. So I'm also thinking about that move. So probably this and this are the candidate moves. I guess I could even play queen f6 now. That's maybe not a bad idea because it puts pressure there as well as on d4. Probably white's going to play bishop e3. If they do that, what's my follow-up going to be? I don't know. Don't know. All right, I'm going to go ahead and play a6. I want to see what white's going to do with this guy. Are they going to go back this way? Are they going to go back this way? I want to... Okay, they do go there. Wait a second. That looks like it loses a pawn. So I'm going to ask myself, can I just take a free pawn? And I believe I can. I think I would rather have the bishop than the knight at the end of that trade. So let's go ahead and take it. There's not really a good discovered attack for this bishop. Sometimes you can move it and unleash it, but in this case, there's nowhere good for it to go. 
right? I mean, you could take this, but then I'm taking here. That doesn't really help white. So, you got a pawn, which is good. I like this bishop. D5 looks like a very powerful move because I'm striking at the center with a tempo on the queen. And yeah, that looks great. I could also play d6 if I don't want to like trade that off and open up the bishop. d6 also looks pretty good. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, which one's better? Which one's better? The only thing about this is I feel like it just activates white's bishop in a way that I don't really want to activate it. So I am going to go d6. Because I want to get my bishop out. If I can limit what white's bishop is doing at the same time, just go back. Interesting. Very interesting moves. Okay. Ooh, do I have a tactic here? Let's see. Queen f6. Bam. Bam. Now white could defend that with like a queen move. A rook move or something. But still kind of an aggressive square for the queen. Also here. No, I think I like this one better. Is that really just kind of ties up white's pieces? Yes. Let's do that. Mm. Mm. Ooh. All right. That's not a great move. Uh, I have two options here. Three options. This one I'm gonna, it's just a pawn. I want more than that. This one's a pawn and a rook. This one's a pawn and an attack on the king. You jump in with the knight, we have the queen knight. So before I go just for the immediate, you know, win a rook, which is good, I just wanna see like, is there a way to get checkmate? So after the king moves here, I could follow up with two different knight moves. Attacking on g2, threatening checkmate. Let's just say the knight's here, just for example's sake. Uh, how does white defend that? Rook to g1, rook to e2, queen to e2. Seem to be the only move. We also have the bishop, which we could throw in there too. If we went to f4, we would also be attacking the bishop. Ah, well, there's bishop f1. No, bishop f1. Okay, so here, here's what's going on. I'm thinking of this. King goes over, knight to f4. Now, the reason I'm choosing knight to f4 instead of h4 is because I want to hit both of these things. So if white were to, let's just say, defend the checkmate with rook to g1, we could simply grab a piece, which is very nice. If they try to defend with the bishop, then that's simply checkmate because the rook no longer can defend. Okay, so boom, boom, boom. What's white gonna do? Ah, uh, no, they can't go queen e2 because the knight's there. Can't go rook e2. Yeah, it's it's gotta be that's gotta be the move, right? Gotta be. Okay, so we want to go here. Let's just do a quick recap. Queen g4 to defend, no, it's not an option. Queen f3 to defend, no, not an option because we take the rook. Queen e2, rook e2, no, not an option. So it's got to be bishop f1, that leads to checkmate. So they have to play rook g1, they have to. Then we take a free piece. There's knight to f3. Surely we would have a good move against that. I just don't know what it is. Oh, and you know what? I could, if I want to simplify the game, I can trade everything. Takes, 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 takes. I would win the exchange. Wait, why was that not a move? Oh, because the rook. Yeah, the rook. Okay. 
All right, there we go. We did it. <laughs> yeah, pretty nice game. Pretty nice game. So it just didn't it just didn't like my little maneuvering of my knight like this but i was doing that because i was a little bit more familiar with those types of positions so i think that makes total sense so all right did i update the wins yet i don't think so right six so i'm gonna say that's close enough 1524 we were trying to get to 1525 um i am going to Probably go get ready for lunch and take care of my legs and stuff. Why is your account named Peter Potzer? Uh, there's another another channel called Chess Adventures. You should go check that out and you'll understand. Uh, but Peter Potzer is one of the characters in those videos. So he's like a 700 rated um, in that series. So <coughs> Oh, and I mentioned it earlier, but I have this timer. I'm, I've been a fan of. It looks kind of cool. Um, but you just turn it on the side. Uh, and whatever number's on top, it just immediately sets the timer to that. So like what I like to do is like, I'll put it for like 25 minutes and it just starts counting down. See that? And then it'll beep and I'll like set it for like 10 minutes to like go and walk or stretch or, you know, whatever, uh, do some exercises. And so I put a link, uh, in the description if you want to check it out. It's, it's pretty handy. I recommend it if you, if you sit a lot and you have a hard time remembering to get up and walk. It doesn't have to be this one, but you should definitely get something similar. Um, you know, just to remind you. Keep up the great work with your channel and health. Thank you, Dauntless Media. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate everybody uh, who's reached out and all the the prayers. It means a lot. Yeah, it seems like my legs are improving just slowly. Blood clots, um, they just don't heal quickly from, from what I'm learning. Actually, the blood thinners don't make the clot go away, which is what I initially thought. I thought that's how it worked, but blood thinners don't do anything to make the clot go away. It's just the your body naturally has to dissolve the clot. Blood thinners just stop it from clotting more. All right, guys, take it easy. I will see you next time.